Yo guys, what is up? Moxie here with the very first episode of Finding Your Vault Hunter. Now this is gonna be episode one in a multi-part series brought to you by Gearbox and 2K. Now this series is gonna be talking about all of the different Vault Hunters in all of the different Borderlands games and breaking down which ones you may want to play. Talking about what they're good at, what their synergies are. If you did not know, Vault Hunters are the playable characters that you pick at the start of your journey in each Borderlands game. So they have pretty significant an impact on your playthrough and I want to talk about through my personal experiences which ones you may like. I've been playing the Borderlands franchise for probably over 10,000 hours in total. I've been playing this series since I was a kid and in this series I'm going to be talking about not only which Vault Hunters you may like but also the ones that I've enjoyed playing the most and the synergies that I like using on them. I hope you guys enjoy episode one of this multi-part series. Let's get right into it. So I remember learning about Borderlands 1 from a game magazine. I had the subscription that would come every month that had gaming news and reviews and features about different games. And one of the features on this magazine that month was for Borderlands, which promised this addictive loot gameplay where you'd be leveling up these specific characters and there'd be thousands of weapons and it was first person combat and it just sounded so cool to me. Uh, it was kind of my thing at the time that I really liked shooting games and I also really liked games that had good character progression and Borderlands really nails that character progression. It's probably why I have so many hours in the franchise as a whole is because that feeling of starting with nothing and then working your way up to legendary weapons with crazy skills is just so satisfying. Now I waited and waited for Borderlands to finally arrive and then once I booted up the game I was met with the big decision of what Vault Hunter did I want to play. Now there's four playable characters in Borderlands 1 and some of them have more synergies with pistols, some of them have more synergies with SMGs, close range, long range. However, uh, the cool thing about Borderlands is you can really play these characters how you want. Just because it has a shotgun skill doesn't mean you need to use it. Uh, you can kind of tailor make these characters to your own playstyle. but I want to walk you through how these characters synergize with different things and their different abilities. Now, the first playable Vault Hunter we're gonna talk about is Roland. Roland is the soldier class in Borderlands 1, and his action skill is the Scorpio turret. This allows you to deploy a turret that will fight alongside you while you're fighting enemies. And as you progress Roland down the skill tree, you can add really awesome abilities to trick out this turret. For example, you can add guided missiles to the turret so that it'll deploy missiles while it's fighting enemies. You can make the turret call in supply drops so that the turret will bring down ammo and grenades to refill for you and your teammates. And Roland's got a lot of healing and run and gun synergies. If you're looking for that combat medic kind of playstyle where you can support your teammates and yourself with your turret and be using guns a lot, Roland's gonna be a great choice for you. Next up, there was Mordecai. Now, Mordecai is the hunter class in Borderlands 1, and he's got a ton of synergies with range damage, particularly sniper rifles and pistols. And Mordecai, what he really brings that's unique to the table is his action skill, Bloodwing. Now, Bloodwing is your pet bird that you can summon to go fly and hit enemies. And as you play Mordecai more and more, you can augment Bloodwing to then daze enemies, to make enemies drop loot for you, and to also make Bloodwing hit a bunch of enemies. So you go from throwing Bloodwing and hitting one enemy and kind of coming back to hitting a whole group of enemies. Mordecai also has a gunslinger skill tree and a sniper skill tree that make him really adept with long range weapons. You've got the trespass skill, which allows your bullets to bypass enemy shields, making them much easier to one shot. And to pair with that, uh, you also have the relentless skill, which allows Mordecai shots to have a chance to deal killer shot damage to basically double the damage. So now you've got high damage shots that are bypassing shield. Next up, there was Brick the Berserker. Now, Brick is the tankiest character and also the most up-in-your-face character. If you like close combat, Brick is going to be the character for you. Now, Brick's signature ability, his action skill, is Berserk, which allows you 
to go into this rage mode where you're going to be dealing increased melee damage. While Berserk is active, you're going to get damage resistance and health regeneration. So enemies are going to have a really hard time killing you and you can just run at enemies with your fists, clobbering them. Brick's Brawler Tree really enforces that melee close range playstyle, giving you skills like Sting Like a Bee, which allow your punches while Berserk is active to dash you towards enemies. So you're just zipping through the battlefield, punching everything. Then you can get blood support so that when you melee something and kill them, you're actually going to get health back and then you can get more melee damage increases. The tank skill tree for Brick does exactly that, turns him into a tank, giving you tons of shield regeneration, damage reduction, uh, and just make you all around harder to kill. And then Brick's blaster tree makes Brick really synergistic with explosive weapons, giving you increased explosive damage, increasing your magazine size with launcher. Um, and master blaster allows whenever you kill an enemy, you get increased increased fire rate and launcher ammo regen, which allows Brick to use rocket launchers and continuously shooting them where other vault hunters would run out of ammo very quickly. Brick can deal tons of damage with those rocket launchers and then get ammo back so you can keep using them. The next playable character is Lilith the Siren. Now Lilith is my most played character. She's the character that I have the most time on and Lilith in Borderlands 1 is a siren. Now sirens have a pretty big impact on the overall story and lore of Borderlands. Sirens are individuals that have incredible and mysterious powers, and they're distinguished by the elaborate tattoos that they have on their bodies. The thing that makes sirens so interesting is that only six sirens can exist at a time, and when a siren dies, their power passes on to another individual. Sirens are very important to the like story of Borderlands, but I don't want to get into that right now. But Lilith being a siren is very important, not only for uh, you to know in terms of playing her, but also in terms of the general background and story of how these Borderlands games uh, function. Now Lilith's action skill was phase walk. Now this made you functionally invisible for a short period of time, increasing your movement speed as well. You'd basically enter this other dimension. And while you're in this other dimension, enemies cannot hurt you and you can walk around them without them noticing you. When you end phase walk, you're going to be creating a blast around your enemies. And I used it when I was playing as a way to reposition around enemies. If I got swarmed by a bunch of enemies and I needed to reload or I was getting low health, boom, phase walk into another dimension. And then I could get around my enemies, get up to a point of interest to shoot at them uh, from afar or, or even get ready and pull out a shotgun to blast them as soon as I come out of the phase walk. It was a very dynamic action skill that I really enjoyed playing. Lilith's controller skill tree was all about controlling the battlefield. You had a lot of ways to augment your abilities, your phase blast, and your bullets to daze enemies. And dazing enemies would reduce their accuracy and their movement speed. So you could go into your phase walk, and then when you phase walk out and do the explosion, everything would get dazed, which means that they wouldn't be able to really hit you or fire back. And the capstone ability would give your bullets a chance to daze. So as you're fighting enemies, they just can't really fight back against you, uh, which is so strong. Now, Lilith's elemental skill tree focused on giving her access to all of the elements. And the element system is one of my favorite things in Borderlands. It's why I really enjoyed Lilith so much is because I love the shock, fire, and corrosive elements. These are elements that will do different amounts of damage to different enemy defenses, where you've got shock dealing more damage to shields and the elemental effects I just found really cool. They do all these damage numbers. They can light enemies on fire. Uh, and it was just something that I really, really enjoyed seeing. Now, Lilith's elemental skill tree allows your melee damage to deal bonus corrosive damage. When you phase walk out, you can deal massive shock damage. And Lilith's phoenix skill, whenever you kill an enemy, you have a chance to not consume ammo and you deal fire damage to all your nearby enemies you'd become the phoenix where everything around you is getting corroded lighted on fire and ignited and it was just so satisfying to play and lastly there was Lilith's assassin skill tree which increased your melee damage so when you went into phase walk you could sneak up behind enemies and punch them and hit them really hard and also increased your bullet damage and bullet speed so that you could be hitting enemies with your smgs better and Lilith had a lot of synergies with smgs which we're about to talk about right now I like to pair this with the Combustion Hellfire. Now the Hellfire is an elemental SMG that I absolutely adored. Uh, the thing that's so cool about the Hellfire 
is when you shoot enemies with it, it ignites them. But the more you shoot them, the more burn damage they're gonna deal. It stacks its elemental damage over time as you fire more and more on enemies. And with Lilith, we can get a bunch of fire rate and ammo regen with SMGs to just spray enemies down with these fire hoses to then make sure that our elemental damage is stacking on top of them and stacking. And it's just a really satisfying way to play her. However, Lilith, like all the other Vault Hunters, had a ton of different ways to play her. For example, even though Lilith had these like SMG class mods, another really cool way to play her had to do with the Spectre class mod. The Spectre class mod would give you a 100% more sniper rifle critical hit damage, sniper rifle ammo regen, and points into skills that synergize with sniper rifles. Now, I could go from playing Lilith as a super up close and personal SMG character to instead of I would now use my phase walk to get away from enemies, distance myself from enemies, and set up really high damage shots with my sniper rifles so that I could take out enemies from a distance. You're going to see this kind of holds true for all of the characters. Yes, these characters have set skills with set class mods. However, because they have a bunch of different class mods and a bunch of different skills, it's up to you to come up with the combo of skills and class mods and weapons and shields that really fits your playstyle that you enjoy the most. There's so many high damage combos that you can come up with. And that's part of the reason why I love this franchise is because it really lets you explore all of these synergies and possibilities with these characters rather than just playing something that's super set in stone. That is going to do it for the first episode of Finding Your Vault Hunter. You really can't go wrong with any of the characters in Borderlands 1. All of them bring something new to the table. You've got Lilith, who's kind of that close range elemental style. You've got Mordecai, who's that more range sniper style. You've got Brick, who's that close range melee in your face style. And you've got Roland, who's kind of that mid range support uh, medic character. Now, all of these are going to be really good, and the choice is now up to you. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Stay tuned for episode two of Finding Your Vault Hunter, where we're going to be diving into Borderlands 2, one of my favorite games in the franchise personally. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Take care. Peace.